In any endeavor, you have to understand your tolerance for risk. What's a failure? You can afford? No, I never thought about my father's money as my money. Being a CEO still means sitting across the table from big institutional investors and showing your leadership and having them believe in you from the time that I can. Remember, I work to make money either babysitting or one year wrapping gifts at a department store at Christmas so I could have my own money. Try not to be either intimidated by or a captive of jargon, even though it's language. And language is about communication. It often exists actually to obfuscate and to control power and not to communicate. I'd actually call myself pretty much a liberal, a progressive liberal, because I do think that government is there to be a provider of services for people who cannot provide for themselves. I had an allowance, but I had to do things around the house to earn it. I think I always wanted my own money. Most people sell stock to pay taxes, but I didn't want to sell any stock. I had higher math sats than in English, yet I became an English major in college. I came to Playboy not expecting to stay, but after five years, I found myself really enjoying the business world, and I realized I had some skill. Not only did I enjoy the creative side of Playboy and enjoy being surrounded by people who are curious about life, but I also love the analytical and hard business side of it. Well, I grew up around the magazine and was part of a generation that was embracing our sexuality. I don't know what a world would be like if you do away with sexy images. I'd guess that 80% of the people who work for Playboy are feminists. I know what the attitudes of the readers are. These are guys who love women and respect women. I defend the right of almost everything to be published because I think that you're better off in trusting the marketplace than allowing other people to make that decision. It's important not to limit the amount of their own money that candidates can spend but to give other people access to enough money to run competitive races. But maybe because the dot-com world gives people positions at a younger age, and many women are prominent in this business, it will help change the view about who can run big companies. I think in terms of what I am able to accomplish and build, I've had this conversation with friends who have had challenging relationships with one or another parent. The only thing I can say is what I feel. The other person isn't going to change. That is who they are. With someone who is genuinely abusive or a bad person, you should just get out of town. But if they're being the best person they know how to be, then you have to decide if there isn't much there you can love and not become consumed with what they're not able to give you. Honestly, in retrospect, it probably was a little easier being an adolescent and not having people immediately know that half was my dad. It's so deeply disturbing to me that half of the eligible voters don't vote in this country. We talk about how divided the country is. The truth is, we don't even know. We just know what the half that voted thought. We should all miss bookstores. They let you discover things. I never thought I was going to go to work. For my father's company, I don't think you can know to many smart people. I don't think you should ever stop meeting people. If you ever get to a point where you stop learning, you will find your professional options and your personal satisfaction severely curtailed. Women would all be better off if we realized we didn't have to choose between being an intelligent being and a sexual being. My father is not that comfortable with children, but he's a terrific father for an adult. The world changed on us. In a world where there were singles bars in every city, women weren't going to go out and hang out in a playboy club. What you don't do is as important as what you do. My father has always enjoyed games, always with a combination of the fun and social side of it, but also always highly competitive. When I first came to Playboy, I thought I would go on and do something else in a few years. 
But when the company got into trouble with political and regulatory challenges, I felt that I could really lead the turnaround. It's embarrassing to be in the only westernized economy that doesn't have paid family, leave and flex scheduling, and that disproportionately helps women. My mantra is, I want to work with people that I like to hang out with, who are smart, where I can add value, that I think is an interesting space. You can learn more about leadership by reading about Lincoln than you can from most business books. I didn't have the luxury of devoting myself entirely to not-for-profit activities. I've always believed that you need to find interactive applications on the internet. Nightclubs are a small revenue business that go through pretty fast popularity cycles. I believe deeply that digital was an empowering opportunity for Playboy, not a threat. It's difficult sometimes to, in effect, let go of how you're used to doing things and give the brand room to be reinvented. While I have always had a good relationship with my father, much of the time it has been a very limited relationship until I was older, so you can't really give him credit or blame for how I turned out. I think when you're on a visiting relationship rather than a living relationship, it's kind of hard to have impact as a parent. Any brand that attempts to live off a retro appeal is only going through a short second life cycle. I've always believed that a goal in life is not to own a boat but have a friend with a boat. You can't delegate turning a company around. Even though money seems such an objective topic, it can also be the most intimate and possibly harmful part of a relationship. Christian Hefner born November 8, 1952 in Chicago, Illinois. She is the daughter of Mildred Williams and Hugh Hefner. Her parents had separated by the time she was five. When her mother remarried, she moved to Wilmette, Illinois. There she graduated from New Trier High School. She attended the National Music Camp at Interlochen, Michigan, during the summers from 1964 to 1969. She graduated summa cum laude from Brandeis University with a bachelor's degree in English and American Literature in 1974. She was elected to Phi Beta Kappa in her junior year. Hefner is an American businesswoman. She was chairman and CEO of Playboy Enterprises from 1988 to 2009 and is the daughter of Playboy magazine founder Hugh Hefner. After college, she freelanced for the Boston Phoenix for a year, writing movie reviews. Thereafter, she moved back to Chicago and started working at Playboy. In 1982, she became president of Playboy Enterprises and was made chairman of the board and CEO in 1988. She was the longest serving female CEO of a publicly traded company. She extended its magazine franchise overseas to 25 localized foreign editions and also developed the company's profitable pay. Television business the first time a magazine successfully leveraged its brand into a television network. The company also acquired adult-oriented businesses such as Spice Network and Club Jenna, continuing the company's electronic expansion. In 1994, Hefner led the company onto the internet with the launch of Playboy.com, the first national magazine to launch a website, and built an international, profitable, multi-revenue stream business, including premium content, e-commerce, advertising, and gaming, both online and mobile. She also built a highly profitable direct marketing, catalog and e-commerce business in film and music through both acquisition and organic growth. And she greatly expanded the leveraging of the Playboy brand via licensing. In her last year as CEO, Playboy generated close to $1 billion in global retail sales, 80% of the sales to women. When she left, over 40 of her executives were women. For three years, she was named to Fortune's list of most powerful women. In May 2011, Hefner was named executive chairman of Canyon Ranch Enterprises. As of 2015, Hefner was chairman of the board of Hatchbetty Brands and served on the board of the DC based Center for American Progress Action Fund, a progressive public policy think tank. Hefner also serves on the advisory boards of the Art Offit Company, an international, multi billion dollar family owned agricultural conglomerate, and Edge Beauty, the world's leading direct to consumer company in 
creating, designing, manufacturing, and marketing unique, culturally relevant niche fragrance brands.